Hello and welcome to the session on Plaxis LE training related to rock material models. My name is Murray Fredland and I'm pleased to be walking through the training with you. Let's first discuss what we will cover today. We will focus on the constitutive models available in the software which facilitate the analysis of rock materials in slopes. This will include the shear normal strength function, the generalized hook brown criterion, the Barton Banda strength model and the four different anisotropic linear models that are implemented. When materials are added to a numerical model, the user must select the method that is utilized by the material model to evaluate shear strength. This is also referred to as a constitutive model. When the user pulls down the method list box, the rock strength constitutive models are identified under the rock category. As can be seen, there is an extensive list of rock strength models implemented. The shear normal strength function can be utilized to allow the user to define a curved shear strength envelope. The relationship between normal stress and shear strength is defined by a series of points. Linear interpolation is utilized to determine the shear strengths between the entered points. The generalized hook brown failure criterion allows calculation of rock strength parameters based on the major and minor principal stresses. The method predicts strength envelopes of intact rock and is based on laboratory traxial tests. The method allows key parameters to be computed from a geological strength index that can be entered in a sub-dialogue from the main dialogue. The Barton Bandis shear strength model provides a nonlinear criterion for rock joint strength. The strength model can be applied to a particular material layer as defined by a region or to a weak surface. The material model is defined by the joint wall compressive strength, the joint roughness coefficient and the residual uh, friction angle of the failure surface. ALM is a constitutive model that describes the shear strength of an anisotropic rock mass in relation to the change of angle of anisotropy. The angle of anisotropy is defined as the angle between the orientations of the plane of shear and the plane of weakness. This model was originally developed by Snowden Mining Industry Consultants in Perth, Australia in 2005. Implementations are specifically based on the work by Ken Mercer published in 2013 and again in 2017. All four of the ALM models have been implemented in Plaxis LE and are available for use in both 2D and 3D numerical models. The angle of the bedding plane is defined differently in 2D versus 3D. In 2D, this is the angle of the bedding plane calculated counterclockwise from the horizontal. In 3D, it's the angle downward from horizontal along the dip direction. The dip direction, which is only defined in 3D, defines the direction that the bedding dips downward along. It's orthogonal to the strike, strike direction, and an angle of zero degrees points straight along the negative x-axis. And positive angles define a uh, clockwise rotation from the negative x-axis. Note that the angle convention for dip angle and dip direction is different than the model rotation angle. It's the same as the convention for wedges, so it might be helpful to define a temporary wedge for reference to ensure that the bedding geometry is defined correctly. Constant dip directions defined in the material dialogues are overridden by bedding guide surfaces if present. The first generation, ALM1, is based on the Moore Coulomb criterion. The ALM1 model is the most basic of the anisotropic models. A and B parameters are entered to define the symmetric anisotropic behavior of the rock mass. Cohesion 1 is defined as the weakness plane, which is usually the bedding plane cohesion. This value corresponds to the minimum shear strength. Cohesion 2 is defined as the rock mass cohesion, and this value corresponds to the maximum shear strength. Friction angle, also called phi 1, is defined as the weakness plane, usually the bedding plane friction angle. This value corresponds to the minimum shear strength, and this value may be entered in terms of the plasticity index. Friction angle, 2, also called phi 2, is defined as the rock mass friction angle. This value corresponds to the maximum shear strength, and it also may be entered in terms of plasticity index. Lastly, the A and B parameters define a linear transition from bedding plane strength to rock mass strength with respect to shear plane orientation. The second generation, ALM2, recognizes that C and phi for a typical rock mass and bedding plane are a function of the stress state within the rock mass and along the bedding plane. This ALM2 rock mass strength model is modified to consider that cohesion and friction angle are a function of the stress state. 
It allows a non-symmetrical definition of the transition from rock mass to bedding shear strength. Angle of the bedding plane must first be defined and is defined in the same manner for all ALM constitutive models as already described. Dip direction, which is defined in 3D only, must also be defined and is defined in the same manner as for other ALM models. The dialogues used for input of the ALM2 parameters are illustrated here. The bedding shear strength subdialog is also shown. The shear strength versus normal stress relationship can be entered as a series of points which the software interpolates between. The rock mass strength is input in a similar manner. The third generation, ALM3, further extends ALM2 on the upslope side, or the positive angle of anisotropy. The downward shear strength guide, negative angle of anisotropy of the model between 0 to negative 90 degrees remains unchanged from ALM2. The ALM3 model is a modification from the ALM2 strength model. In this strength model, the upslope and downslope have separate functions for shear strength versus normal stress. The downslope slide side remains the same and the upslope curve is modified to address the concern of overestimating shear strength. Multiple A, B, and C parameters define the non-symmetrical shape of the shear strength transition. The rate and shape of the transition depends on the bedding to rock mass strength ratio as well as the normal stress. Both the rock mass and bedding shear strengths are now modeled non-linearly in terms of the normal stress. The angle of the bedding plane is defined with the same methodology as with the other ALM models. ALM4 further extends ALM3 on the relationship between the angle of anisotropy and shear strength. Now custom definitions of the relationship between the angle of anisotropy and shear strength can be described. The curve is entered as a series of points and the software performs linear, linear interpolation between the points. Therefore, the ALM4 method is the most general of the methods and allows the definition of the shear strength at any angle. ALM4 could also be utilized to model any of the other ALM1 to 3 methods. It's possible to insert ALM shear strength functions manually or import parameters or values from existing materials. This functionality is useful because the points from the Hook Brown or Barton Band as constitutive models can be exported from these rock strength models and implemented in the context of the ALM 1 to 4 constitutive models. So to summarize, the Plaxis LE software allows the definition of a number of rock strength material models. The material models allow reasonable definition of intact rock and rock joints. The anisotropic linear models provide a unique function to represent the strength of rock masses both parallel and perpendicular to bedding planes. Thank you for your time and this concludes the video on rock strength properties in the Plaxis LE software.